and welcome back to Yuri China 120. I am Jeff Cliff, and this is a series of 120 videos of things that I learned at the University of Virginia as part of my computer science degree. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about another logical fallacy, uh, or at least something pretty close to a logical fallacy. Uh, this one is the argumentum ad baculum uh, fallacy, uh, or literally uh, something like argument of a stick. Uh, it's uh, probably more or better understood to be something closer to appeal to force, or shut up or I'm going to hit you, or might makes right, uh, or extortion, or a scare tactic, etc., etc. Uh, although the, the stick was probably the original uh, kind of implement or tool of force uh, that everyone would kind of understand what it's used for, the AK-47 is probably a better representation in modern times so of something that's clearly made to kind of get you to do something whether or not it's the right thing to do, whether or not it makes sense to do it, but you'll do it because, you know, the person holding the AK is going to shoot you otherwise, and you better do what he's going to say. Uh, so, the, the idea, of course, here is the argument where force, or the threat of force, or the implied threat of force, or, or possibly literally a big stick or an AK-47, is the justification made for the argument, made or implied. So Fallacy Files, uh, the website, uh, claims that this technically isn't a logical fallacy. Uh, I really don't care. Um, it's close enough for our purposes. Uh, but regardless, uh, so as in kind of previous examples, we can kind of do the uh, um, formal view of it. Something like this, uh, X, and if you don't believe X, I will hurt you. There's the argument right there. Uh, so again, it, it's just something very simple. Uh, you can find examples of it going all the way back in human history, as far back as you know, people have been picking up AK-47s or sharp pointy sticks or even big clubs. Uh, this has been a part of our history, a part of our heritage, as this kind of dominant species uh, of people who hit each other with sticks. Um, and, and of course, the, the perception of this uh, as a fallacy or as a problem or as something that perhaps isn't the best way to resolve uh, disagreements of opinion dates at least as far back as the Middle Ages, uh, at least as far as getting this particular name. And uh, so uh, it's going to be related to other fallacies and other things we've made videos of. The, the most clear example of something it's going to be related to is, of course, the appeal to authority. Uh, because who has the big stick? You know, who has the most AK-47s? The authority, the the person in power, uh, who commands the people with the guns, perhaps. Uh, that is, who is in? You know, who we're probably talking about it most of the time where this comes into play. The other is, of course, the appeal to emotion, because fear is an emotion, and not only is it an emotion, but it actually shortcuts other kinds of reasoning circuits in the brain that you respond quickly, and if it's triggered, you might react poorly even if you're not fully convinced by the argument itself. I.e., if you end up getting into an argument where someone gives you an order like this, where, you know, believe X or I'll kill you, uh, you may end up believing something not necessarily related to X, uh, but something that's still wrong because you've been kind of jittered by this uh, obvious threat. Uh, and of course, like the appeal to emotion, as we spoke about in that video, uh, narcissists and sociopaths use this. Uh, it's something that you can actually kind of tell that you're dealing with a sociopath or a narcissist uh, by the fact that they're actually going to the extent of using this in an explicit way. If we go back to the Great White Combine video, uh, the, the point in relation to that is that, you know, this baculum, this AK-47, uh, ends up being used in practice, of course, but it use, gets used in some directions more than others. It gets used on some classes of people more than others. And it's worth noting who ends up getting the brunt of uh, force applied to them. Uh, you know, you look at, for example, in the Israel versus Palestine dispute, and just don't, don't take my word for it. Go look who has the higher kill rate and who has the higher kill count. Uh, in that particular conflict. Just observe it uh, and see if you can draw any consequence or any conclusion 
just based on that fact alone. So who's using force as, as a way to resolve conflict and a way to resolve disagreement, uh, and who is kind of subject to that force? Of course, the first thing to note about uh, this particular type of argument is that it really doesn't matter what the content of the argument is. You can have X or not X. It really doesn't matter because at the end of the day, the person with the AK-47 is going to say to do it or to believe it, and you're going to have to do it. So again, it's because it's not constrained or it does not constrain the beliefs involved, uh, this is a pretty good indication that this is not actually a pretty decent way of finding the truth, of, of, of resolving conflicts, uh, of dealing with things at all. It just, it's a mess. Uh, it creates a mess, uh, and if it's applied, you end up breaking things that you may not actually want to break. And so the argument itself is kind of broken. Uh, and it really doesn't matter who wields it. You know, you give the AK-47 from one group to another, uh, and they'll use it for their purposes. And so it, it really doesn't really uh, resolve anything so much as just establish a pecking order. And in general, if, if you view this as acceptable and view the, the, the use or appeal to force as an acceptable means of, of doing things, uh, just consider what would happen if the person who has the ability to project that force were to change uh, and were to change from one faction to another uh, in a particular situation. Uh, maybe it's, you know, the people who are using this right now are respectable businessmen, uh, and that the only people who are kind of util utilizing force to further their agenda or the threat of force uh, are these respectable businessmen. Uh, but that gun can easily or just as easily be wielded by child soldiers who are not respectable businessmen. And so it may be worth considering putting something in the way of it being used, at least as frequently, uh, by either party, uh, so that the risk of the second party can be kind of reduced even before it happens. And worse than just noticing that this can be used for either uh, one argument or its negation, uh, is that it may be possible for people with the vacuum uh, to ask for things or to ask you to believe things that are not even logically possible. Uh, things like both X and not X. And we haven't quite gotten into exactly how this works yet, but uh, regardless of how it works, just imagine something that's completely impossible uh, and then being asked to do it under the threat of being shot if you don't. So it's like, please go trim this unicorn down. Well, what unicorn? You know that unicorn over there, right? It's, it's, it's an impossible task. If you're asked to do it, or if you're asked to believe that it's possible to do it, uh, again, you're, you're just going to be in this situation where th there is no real good way out of it, and you're going to get shot. So, again, just consider the possibility that this the whole use of the argument here is in error. Uh, so not only can it be used to, to justify or forcing people to believe in possible things, but it can be uh, used to justify people to use the wrong approach. And remember, remember going back uh, to the different approaches video, we discussed all the valuable ways and reasons why you might approach uh, problems and questions different from different directions. Uh, if you have someone with a gun in front of you or a vacuum, uh, they may demand that you do things a certain way. And that way may not actually get you the results that are needed or that are necessary or that are possible. And so you can get into these situations where you're, you're not able to come to the right answer because the way the method involved that's being demanded uh, will not work. As mentioned in the bandwagon uh, video, uh, this might look like it works sometimes uh, because occasionally the people with power, the people who are able to credibly project force, uh, do amass a, a, an amount of truth, an amount of uh, organization that allows them to, to credibly be able to do this. Uh, and so it might look like uh, the use of force and the use of threat of force uh, helps them do so for a time. Uh, but because they're, it's not able to kind of stand up to that in a logical way, uh, it takes time for their mistakes to kind of culminate in uh, enough pissing off uh, enough people uh, that 
the, the amount of force involved kind of shifts in some direction, and then everything kind of falls apart at that point. Uh, so the, you know, the people that you convinced by the threat of force uh, eventually turn on you, uh, and then you're screwed because you didn't hesitate to use the baculum on them, so they will definitely not hesitate to use it on you. Now, there may be valid uses of the baculum. There may be valid uses of force. Uh, it's, you know, that we can go into the, the, the various reasons why you know, this may or may not be valid, but it's worth at least considering that there may be exceptions to kind of a, an entire avoidance to this. Um, so, for example, uh, there may be uh, the use of force or the threat of force that's not contingent on your believing the premises of an argument or believing uh, the justification of that. So, for example, uh, we could have an argument like If you drive drunk, you go to jail. Uh, there's kind of an implied threat of force there, because if you don't willfully go to jail, then we'll get guys with big sticks or some kind of a vacuum to drag you there and put you there. So there's force involved. So the thing that makes this kind of a potentially, at least, valid use of uh, this kind of form of argument uh, is that you don't have to believe that it's correct for, for you to go to jail. So uh, all you have to believe is that you, if you drink, then there's a consequence to your drinking. Uh, you don't necessarily have to believe that this consequence is justified, that it's sufficient, that it's necessary, all that stuff. All you have to believe is that there is this consequence. kind of expand on this, uh, you could say, uh, you know, if you drive drunk, then you'll go to jail, therefore you should not drive drunk. This is another example of a valid, or potentially valid, uh, way of approaching it, because again, you're concluding about the consequences, or you're basically concluding about your behavior given the consequences. And so, it's not necessary again not necessarily that you believe that the consequences are in any way justified you're not the, the argument is not being used to justify the consequence the argument is being used to justify your behavior it would be invalid to try to justify the concept or the consequence part by force that would be uh, again committing this particular kind of fallacy there are a whole bunch of contentious or, or possibly borderline uh, uses of this particular fallacy, uh, which are nowhere near as clear as the drunk driving example. Uh, pretty much anywhere where paternalism is justified or potentially justifiable, you'll find this hiding in the background somewhere. So for example, if you have a patient of any kind in the hospital, or perhaps a child who's part of a family that is not capable of being independent of that family, there may be conditions in which the use of force is possibly valid, or at least the threat of force in an argument is possibly valid. When I went, uh, I had, uh, what was it, I think it was uh, uh, some kind of an, a serious infectious disease. Uh, it was kind of like the flu, it was a really, really bad flu. Um, and I went to the hospital uh, and was put in a pandemic wing uh, because there was a, uh, basically pandemic going around where people were getting this flu, getting extremely ill, and then having other people get this flu from them. And had I tried to leave, sec security would have kept me from doing so. Uh, the doors were all locked. And it was very kind of scary to be on the inside, but nevertheless, the, the use of force or the threat of force in that particular situation may have saved lives. If, uh, that was absolutely necessary to do so. As far as my 
specific situation was concerned, they ended up letting me go to a farm far outside of civilization, so that if, for example, I had died, uh, at least it would only impact the farm and the people who knew, uh, were kind of in that direct area, so it wouldn't have been a contagious thing for an entire city. Democracies involve the threat of forests at their very kind of root. Uh, it is a very tightly interwoven thing for democracies to, to involve some level of force at some point. Uh, so, for example, uh, the argument, quote, if you don't do what I say, I'm going to withhold my vote from you and vote for the other guy, unquote. Now, that's not much of a threat. Uh, again, you're not harming them directly with a physical stick or an AK-47, but at the same time, you're using a threat to get your desired ends or to, to justify your kind of beliefs being accepted by the second party. So even though it's kind of like a negative force, a, a force that exists by the withholding of something, uh, of which there are other examples of, uh, it is still a threat. And it's a threat, a, an argument based on a threat is an appeal for the backfield. And it may not seem like this kind of threat is very credible, or at least very important to keep in mind. Of course, if it's done by one person, that one person can probably be ignored in a large democracy such as Canada. But if you have something like, for example, Unifor, which is a union comprising of, I think, a, a well over 100,000 members at this point, if they make that same threat, uh, even though the, the nature of the threat is no different than if an individual were to have done it, uh, it is still, again, uh, a threat. It is a use of this argument of the stick, uh, to, to, as opposed to a carrot, uh, to uh, to a, a achieve ends uh, in our democratic system. There may be uh, situations in what's called an affray, uh, or a chaotic situation, where the use of force or the threat of force may justify. Uh, or may be justified purely in the interests of keeping the peace. Uh, and it's worth considering the differences between the use of threat uh, to purely just keep peace and the threat of force to justify that particular peace. Uh, so in that difference, in the, in the difference between those two particular cases, you may find this particular type of reasoning being used. Uh, what are some examples of this having actually happened in, in our history here? Uh, the, probably the best one I found was, if I'm pronouncing it right, uh, Giordano Bruno. Uh, one of the early Copernicans, uh, just in the late 16th century, uh, he was actually subject to the Inquisition. Uh, and because of his beliefs, uh, they literally threatened with his life uh, unless he changed his views on the subject. And so the argument of form would have been something like, believe in our view of how the universe works, or we'll kill you. And there was a credible threat. Uh, he refused to accept their conclusion, uh, and was burned at the stake. So literally lit on fire, and was forced to die for his beliefs. Now, normally it's not that obvious that this is happening. Normally, the, like a white lie, it's a little subtle thing that happens where you, somebody threatens you and you either have to believe them or have to do what they say, uh, and you're not necessarily going to get literally burned at a stake for it. But even in cases that aren't that extreme, it's still worth keeping in mind. Uh, I got into an argument just this past week where somebody basically said uh, something to the extent of, you know, if you don't accept my right to be uh, on this particular piece of land, uh, my particular band of thugs will back me up with guns and military helicopters and possibly flying robots with weapons on them and, you know, blah, 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 right? And so regardless of the, the, the justification of uh, their being on a particular spot, um, they chose to justify it by the use of force or the appeal to force where they say, we will be here because we'll back up our, our being here with force. And so that is their argument 
or having a legitimate case for the right to being on a particular piece of land. And it's true that, uh, as the saying goes, power comes from the barrel of a gun. Uh, but you don't have to acknowledge that power, and you certainly don't have to treat that as a valid argument and a valid use of force. Uh, another kind of sub-example of this is the proof by intimidation, uh, where you can use a proof that is long and complicated, and if you don't agree that it's valid, you'll kind of lose social style, or lose, a, uh, lose social status. Um, so you can, it, it's used in mathematics, uh, and I guess areas of uh, academia that are like mathematics, where uh, sometimes the proof is long enough that you can kind of use it uh, as a vacuum in and of itself. What are, the, what are some other examples of this? Uh, another good example is the kind of monotheism uh, classic, uh, quote, if you don't believe in my particular god, you will burn in hell, unquote. Uh, burning in hell for an entire eternity is a pretty big threat. Uh, it may not be a very credible one, but at least it's you know, some of the smartest people in history have considered it as a credible and, uh, I guess, alternative that they would possibly want to avoid. Uh, but nevertheless, at the base of its argument, again, it's, it's a stick. It's, it's something that's just being used to coerce you into believing something, into accepting a, a regime of belief uh, purely on its the, the merit of the, the stick being shaken at you. Uh, an example from Sequine.net was, quote, if you don't believe in evolution, you won't get tenure as a biology professor, unquote. Um, well, I put in the professor part, but regardless, uh, the reason why you wouldn't get tenure as a biology professor would not necessarily be that you don't believe in evolution, so much as the entire mechanism of biology depends upon evolution. So it's you would, you would have a very difficult time believing anything in the science of evol or in the science of biology without acknowledging such a basic fact. Uh, now that's not necessarily a threat. That is a statement of, of, of how biology and how biological systems work. Uh, so if you were to merely say, you know, because you don't believe in this, uh, you won't get tenure, that would be a threat. Uh, and that would be something that uh, would be this particular fallacy. So, uh, here, what are some other examples here? Uh, quote, you should have stayed home rather than protest, unquote. The G20, uh, when it came to Canada, uh, and when Toronto was occupied, uh, this was actually something that was kind of broadcast on the major media and broadcasting in channels where people were likely to hear it. Uh, this very concerted uh, effort of convincing people that instead of using your right to protest or even just going out in public, uh, that you should stay home and be afraid, and that it's acceptable to stay home and that there's an acceptable use of force that could be applied to you if you don't. Again, this is a, an appeal to the stick uh, and is certainly something that we'd, we'd more expect in uh, countries that are not democracies, but at, at least in the case of Canada, the stick can come out, and that was in fact a credible threat, uh, even if it was one that was not justifiable. Uh, quote, if you don't give us $5,000 and publicly sign this saying that you recant your beliefs about sharing, we're going to take you to court and charge you for sharing information and take everything you own and possibly sue your legal team, unquote. Uh, this is an example used by copyright and patent trolls uh, when they catch you doing something that they don't approve of online, or regardless of whether they approve of your, or approve of your behavior, uh, it's a way for them to get a cheap $5,000 every time they do this. And if they do it to a couple hundred thousand people, they can actually make some serious coin. And again, what is this argument at its root? Uh, the root is they have this power in the legal system in the United States, Canada, and soon anywhere where the TTIP and the Trans-Pacific Partnership are signed, uh, where they can use the legal system as a vacuum 
uh, that they can swing at people. And if you don't do what they say, uh, the consequences are much higher than if you do. Um, but even if you do, again, there are serious consequences involved. So uh, again, it's a, a use of force, even though it's a legal force, uh, it has no bearing to whether or not you should share, uh, except insofar as the direct consequences are involved. And of course, the suggested uh, response to that is not necessarily giving them the $5,000 uh, if there are other means of addressing that situation available. Quote, why do I have to go to church? Unquote. Quote, if you ever set or ask that question again, I'll make you read your Bible for an hour every day, unquote. Uh, rather than answering the question, which is, why do I go to church, uh, you know, the, the, the person in this situation just used a threat of forcing someone to read the Bible, which, having done this, this can be a boring experience, and if your child being forced to, to partake in this boring experience, that would be a credible threat. And so, you know, there's a chance for you to have an open line of communication, even if you are a Christian, and even if you do, do believe in the contents of that Bible, uh, that there, it would be worth having that conversation and under, or helping the child understand the importance of that faith. Uh, if you don't do this, they're likely to not understand the importance and not understand anything valuable in it. Uh, so you'll kind of miss that chance of getting that valuable information to them. Uh, here's a, kind of another example, which is, you know, if you look at, and don't, because it's illegal in Canada, but if you had remembered before C-51 was passed to go look up some of uh, Delwa al-Islamiyah's propaganda, you would see something like a picture of 20 guys with, you know, dressed in black, usually with, you know, some kind of an AK-47 or, or related gun. I'm not a firearms expert, but you can kind of get the picture. It's a big stick, right? Uh, and so if you don't do what those 20 people say, uh, or don't believe in their p particular belief system, you're an infidel and they can kill you with impunity. Again, this is an appeal to the force, or a appeal to force. It's an appeal to the state. It's, it's threatening uh, the use of force, and again, it's a credible use of force if, in, if you're either in the Middle East or in a large city where they may target by suicide bombers or, or, or something of the sort. Uh, and so you may end up getting to a situation where this force can be applied to you, but there's no justification for it. Uh, their beliefs could have gone any way, uh, just as we've mentioned er earlier in this video. And so it's the, the only thing kind of keeping them uh, with the amount of power that they have is the fact that they have these vacuum uh, sticks available to them. Uh, and so th it's not an acceptable way of resolving differences in the Middle East or not. Uh, and sooner or later, someone is going to turn uh, that particular kind of stick against them. So in conclusion, attack the argument, not the person. Uh, if you have the means to attack the person, uh, be very careful when you do so. Um, if you're not in a situation where you have a legitimate claim uh, to perform paternalistic behavior, just don't do it. Uh, don't s don't assume that you can uh, always survive by the use of force, uh, because sooner or later someone's going to turn that particular device against you, and you will fall from it. Live by the sword, die by the sword. And this is a lesson that, unfortunately, uh, we have to learn over and over and over again. But hopefully you can take it in and uh, not live by the vacuum. So, as usual, uh, if you would like to uh, make veiled threats uh, or uh, any other comments or anywhere where this video is posted, uh, feel free to leave them. Um, and if you uh, have Bitcoin or the ability to donate, there should be a little donate uh, address at the bottom somewhere uh, so that we can help fund our whiteboard supply uh, or whiteboard marker supply. And uh, if you have any questions or would like to see more examples of uh, people being threatening to each other in stupid ways, uh, feel free to re request them. There's uh, plenty of examples uh, the deeper into history we care to wade. So uh, tune in next video where we'll probably have another logical fallacy, and I will see you then.